The next one in your book is called plottage. Plottage. You got know what subdivision is, right? Subdividing, you take 100 acres and you divide it into 100 one acre lots and then you sell the one acre lots and the total is more money than you paid for the 100 acre. That's the typical subdivision that we talk about. Plottage is the inverse of this. This is where you buy two small lots and you push them together and the value of the one big lot is worth more than the value of the two smaller lots added together. Plottage or assemblage. This happens a lot in the inner cities when they start regentrifying or rehabbing a neighborhood. You may get somebody that buys a house on the corner, they buy the house next to it, they demo both houses, push them together, sell that to a convenience store or a gas station, and that land is worth more than the price of the two houses they paid for them. All right, that is called plottage. It's the inverse of subdivision. Two lots made into one, and the value of the one is greater because of the size and location and zoning than the two lots put together. Are we good? Thumbs up? A couple more here. Regression and progression. Regression is backwards. This is where a large house is sitting amongst smaller houses. So the value of the large house has regressed compared to what it would be if it was sitting amongst similar houses. I was a victim of regression. When I got divorced from my wife, there was a house that went up for sale in the same neighborhood and I bought it so my children could be close. They could ride the same school bus, have the same friends. But it was Davis's largest home, four bedrooms, three baths on a cul-de-sac. The other four houses in the cul-de-sac were all single story houses. So the value of that bigger house was probably brought down by the other smaller houses around it then if that house would have been sitting somewhere else with the same size houses. That's regression. Progression up is just the opposite. This is where a smaller house sits in amongst bigger houses. So the value of that small house has progressed upwards compared to what it should have been if it was sitting amongst the same size, similar houses. So progression up, regression down. Okay. The principle of substitution. The principle of substitution says, if there was a house that sold for, make up a number, 150, and I'm going to list a house that would substitute for that house, most probably then my price is going to be what? 150 under the principle of substitution. This, my friends, is the basis for the sales comparison approach or the comps that we are getting ready to talk about. The sales comparison approach is solely based on the principle of substitution. One house will substitute for another. And we're going to go in depth in it here in just a minute. All right. And then obviously the last thing that can affect value is supply and demand. So what you have are 11 factors that can affect the value of a property. They can affect it and they can work individually. 
or in concert with each other. You could have two or three of these things going on at the same time. Cameron? I was gonna say, so in supply and demand, say you have like the only house in the neighborhood available to sell. Would that bring your house value up? Since yes. like, you're the only house in the neighborhood selling right now? Yeah. Happens a lot. Say you're on a really exclusive neighborhood, like, I don't know, Crooked Stick Golf Course, and there's only one house. That house will probably go at a premium because there are many number of people that want to live on a golf course and there's only one of them. Now, contrast that with some anomaly happens and every house goes for sale on the golf course at the same time. You see how that supply and demand could be affected. If every house was for sale, that would also affect the property. It could bring them down because now there are multiple buyers and sell or buyers that they can choose. So right? it's not going to be unique to, anymore. Do what? It, your house wouldn't be unique anymore if it was yeah. everyone was selling around you. Well, if, if, so the supply and demand would come in. Now you've got demand, but you've got a large supply because every house is for sale. And that would affect the value of the property. That is how this whole system works. So there are plenty of people that have said things like, oh, I don't want to list my house right now because there may be five houses in the neighborhood. I want to wait for several reasons. One is I want to want them to close because if they get a high value, I can use that as a comp. And two is like you were pointing out, I don't want to compete with seven other houses in the neighborhood to try and sell my property. So that is a very good analogy of how supply and demand can affect the value of a property. All right, so are we good on those? Thumbs up. Because what I wanna do now is calculate value. We have been talking about this word called value. We have talked about some of the principles that change it. So now I wanna show you how properties actually, or an appraiser actually gains value or determines the value of a property. There are three methods to do this. The first method is called the sales comparison approach. In your book, I want you to write the words existing homes. The sales comparison approach works really well when the homes have a history like our MLS system that we can look at to determine historical sales. This is probably 99% of all the CMAs you will ever do in your career are based upon the sales comparison approach. And when you do that, there are certain things that you have to substitute for. So let's see. So when you do the sales comparison approach, what happens is your client calls you up and says, hey, I want you to list my property. As you can see here, it's a three bedroom, two bath, 1,500 square foot property built in 1990 and it sits on one acre of land. And you're like, okay, I'll be there at five o'clock to uh, talk to you about the listing. So what you do is you now have a couple hours to get ready. And what you do is you go out to our MLS system and you look at what we call the comps. Now, when we look at the comps, there are several things we have to understand. First of all, this is an art. It is not a science. And if you're a numbers person out there like me, this will pose a problem to you. I want things to work out perfectly based on numbers. That's not how this is gonna work. This is an art and the more you do, the better you get, all right? Now, the first thing under the principle of substitution you look at that's not listed in here is this thing called location. And typically the general rule of thumb is you want properties within one mile. That is a rule of thumb, all right? 
it's not a necessity because then you start looking at things like 24th and Talbot. That is south of the river here in Indianapolis. You can't go to 34th and Talbot. That sits on the other side of the river. That changes the value drastically. So you, as a artist, would have to understand that even though one mile is the general accepted rule of thumb, I cannot use those on the other side. Um, I can't remember the name. I think it's Fletcher Place that sits there by IUPUI, $300,000 houses. You go across White River, White River into Hallville, they actually issue you a gun when you close there, all right? So you've got to be able to understand and use your art to understand that maybe one mile is not going to be allowed. You may get to go one mile this way and maybe two blocks that way. Woodford Place only has three blocks. East Drive, Middle Drive, Center Drive, or Center Drive, West Drive. You go outside of Woodford. It's not Woodford. What's it called? Is it Woodford Place? Yeah. <clears throat> Tecumseh. I had a house on Tecumseh that was given to me. My backyard, I could throw a softball into that backyard. It was listed at $600,000. The difference between that and that, you have to understand. All right. So let me ask you a question. How much are houses worth in King Park in Fort Wayne? I don't know. I made that up. I don't even know if there's a King Park. The point I'm getting at is your license allows you to list property throughout the entire state. Your intelligence should not. And this is the prime example. I don't know anything about King Park. I couldn't even do a CMA because I don't know that I can't go two blocks that way, but I could go a mile that way because I'm not familiar with the location. All right, so let's go back. So one mile is typically the accepted location. Time frame is typically within the last six months. Could be more, could be less. Depends on how the market's going. One of the favorite things I love to ask my new agents is, when pulling comps, which house is more important? The house that sold two years ago right beside your listing or the house a half a mile away that sold yesterday? The answer is yes. It depends. If the market hasn't changed, maybe your neighbor's house that sold last year is a better comp. If the market's very volatile, maybe a property sitting a half a mile away that sold yesterday might be a better comp. Once again, this is where the art comes in and you understanding what you're doing in your market and things of that nature. So now let's assume we've looked within our mile and our six months and we have found three comps and I've got them listed for you on the screen. Notice that these houses are a three, two, that's the slang for three bedroom, two bath, there are three, two, 1,500 square foot property built in 1990 on one acre. One of them sold for 149,000. The second comp you find, exact same property, sold for 151,000. And then a third comp that sold, sold for 153,000. Now the key here is you want to actually use sold comps, not listed, Anybody can list a property for anything they want uh, at any time. So active listings typically are not your best bet is you want sold properties, all right? So if you see these three comps, it's real easy for you to now go back to your uh, client and go, hey, look, based on the principle of substitution, your house will substitute for one of these three comps so your value range 
is somewhere in this area. Where would you like to list your property? And this is where they typically say 160. Uh, what? I'm sorry, maybe you misunderstood. And I literally have heard this. Well, Susie sold her house down the street and I'm a much better housekeeper. That was my favorite one. I'm a much better housekeeper than her. All right. So that's what the principle of substitution tries to tell you is the fact that you have three properties that will substitute for your listing and therefore they will most probably sell at one of those rent prices. Therefore, you can determine a market value of 149 to 153. Everybody see where I got that. What do you think these houses are based on these comps I'm showing you right here? What would you guess these kind of houses are? These are what we call production builder houses. Vinyl Village, Throw and Goes, anything like that. Because yeah. that builder probably built 30 of them in that neighborhood. And they're the exact same thing. That's why you could find comps that match it. Cool? All right, now here's the problem. Let's see if I can do this. Do, do, do. Just make some space here for us. The problem is it's not always going to be fun in the sun like that, because what you're going to end up with is this, where you get a three bedroom, two and a half bath on 1500 square feet of property. Now, if our comp has only two baths and this comp has two and a half baths and sold for 149 we must adjust it to match our two bath property therefore the value of that 149 is actually going to go which direction people down right because it sold for 149, but it's two and a half baths. So ours is only two baths. We must adjust that comp up. I'm sorry, we must adjust ours up or theirs down. And my question to you is how much is a half bath worth? 500, 5,000, 50,000? This is where the art comes in. If you are a South Side or a North Side person and you continually work in Westfield, you might be able to say, well, I've done enough listings. I know that a half a bath is worth about five grand. So I need to make this property or adjust it to our two bath property. And the second one, I don't know, this is not gonna work really well, uh, maybe is on two acres. Once again, I got to lower that value and how much is an acre of land worth? Oh, uh, let's say $2,000. Well, that one now becomes 149. And we can play this game forever. This one's 1700. How much is 200 square feet? I don't know, three grand. Or two grand, make the numbers work better. Now we can see that, th th so if this is true, now their value is here. Based upon you adjusting the comparables to that property. All right. Anybody have a question? Can comparables be adjusted? up then because if you have two acres of land and they only have one acre i always thought more like you said land is more valuable so when two acres of land make the value go up right no 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 we have to make these match ours oh we have to make it match and the what, way to, what we're going to list oh okay so if it's set on two acres and sold for 149, what would our property sitting on one acre sell for? 
The answer is less than one four. Or, I'm sorry, less than one fifty one. It sold for one hundred and fifty one, but it was on two acres. Ours is only on one acre, so we have to bring what this would have sold for if it was sitting on one acre. So we lower the value. Okay. Right. The way to look at it is what I was just saying. If it's sitting on two and it sold for 151, what would you pay for one acre? Less, right? I don't know what less, but you would pay less because the two acre sold for 151. If I bought a Ferrari for 100 grand, what am I paying for a Pinto? I don't know, but it would be less. So I've got to adjust the comp down to meet my property that I'm getting ready to list. Now, I don't have one on there, but we could do it this way. Suppose that we have found one that's a three bedroom. Maybe we have. All right, my writing seems to have disappeared. Suppose we found one that was a three bedroom, one bath, and it sold for 140 even. Well, now this is a smaller house because ours is two baths. So we would expect to pay more than that 140. So we would have to adjust this number up and we would say, how much is a bath worth? Well, I think it's worth five grand. So based on a 3-1 at 140, a 3-2 would be 145. So we would bring the comp up in that case because the comp is inferior to our property as opposed to the others that were superior. So we had to lower their values, right? That is the principle of substitution. And you would use all kinds of things. You could use square footage, you could use basements, you could use, well, most notably location, distance, age, the type of financing. All of those things would be what you would use on a comp. Now, what you would not use, notice that in none of those definitions did we put stainless steel appliances ceramic backsplash so the fact is it plays no role in comping a property and that's what i was trying to tell you earlier it plays no role because we didn't comp all the other comps as if they had stainless steel appliances we don't know can't certainly go out into their house and look but we do know it was three bedroom one bath 1500 square foot built in 1990, all of that stuff. So that's what we use to comp on. And that's what I was telling you earlier when people go, oh, well, I, it's worth 150, but I got one of those really cool showers that spray on the whole body and I got stainless steel appliances. So that, now my house is 160. No, how do we know that the comp that sold for 151 also didn't have that? Don't know. So we can't use that as a comping point. We can only comp things that we can get information on. Shauna? And wouldn't it be taste specific for each uh, buyer anyway? Like I could be a buyer that comes in and you may have that shower, but I'm gonna probably rip it out anyway and redo it myself. So, right. does it so that's what I'm saying. It has no value. It doesn't change the value. And you're mm -hmm. absolutely correct. Now, what it does do is, and I'm gonna say this, and this goes against what you just said. What it does do is makes it the best $150,000 house. Let's say you wanted to rip the shower out. You just looked at one of the listings. It had one of the old shower heads and you're like, okay, I'm gonna have to rip that out. And you go, well, there's one more I wanna look at. So we go look at another house that's three bedrooms, two bath. You walk into that bathroom and it already has the shower in it. Which one would you buy if they're both the same price? Exactly. It didn't change the house value to 160, but it made it the best 150 house there was. 
I've got one that's got, like I said, the olive green refrigerator. And this one, same price, has got stainless steel. Oh, this one's a better house. And I'm going to use that word because, like you said, Lashana, sometimes it's case specific. I know that, for instance, and I think I mentioned this, pools. How many like pools? I don't. My wife and I had too many children that were too young, too close together. I did not want a pool. As a matter of fact, people would go, oh, you love this house that's got a pool. I'm like, stop, I'm out. That was a deal breaker for me. So it is case specific sometimes when people say, well, it's a better house. Well, not to everybody because houses on a lake, I didn't want. Houses with an in-ground pool, I didn't want. I had too many, too much risk of young children playing in the pool, let alone neighbor's kids that may have came over. So yeah, it is case specific. All right.